Right. Our discussion, obviously, today focuses on complex numbers. Complex numbers. Now, for example, in this case, we are effectively saying let Z to be 5 minus 2i and W be minus 4 minus 3i. We need to find uh, some of these uh, real parts, like the real part of the product of Z and W, but also we need to find uh, the imaginal part of the multiplicative inverse of Z. Okay, so um, we look at the solutions to these particular questions in the first solutions, right? Now, solutions to part one and part two. Let's focus first on part one. Right, so part one focuses on uh, the real part of the products or the real part of ZW. Right, so um, I know that much of this is something possibly you know, and this is therefore the real part of uh, Z. What is Z? Z is uh, 5 minus 2i. So we're just uh, revising some of these things. Right, 5 minus 2i and then W. W is minus 4 minus 3i, right, is minus 4 minus 3i, and we close like this. And this is uh, what, obviously, the real part is. Okay, let us uh, just perform the algebra here. So we're going to multiply using um, the normal multiplication of binomials. 5 times minus 4 gives us minus 20, and 5 times minus 3i gives us minus 15i and minus 2i times uh, minus 4 will give us plus 8i and uh, minus 2i times uh, minus 3i is going to give us exactly minus 6. Okay, now let's carefully obviously look at this multiplication and most importantly, we need to make sure and to ensure that uh, we really are getting the correct products here and we're not, re we're not really making any mistakes, okay? And then now, um, obviously, simultaneously, I'm just uh, checking the multiplication to make sure that our multiplication is uh, very, very correct. I don't want um, typos here, but obviously, in the end, we're interested in the method, but we must make sure that we avoid mistakes, okay? So this is what we have. Now, let us continue then. This is the real part of minus... 20 and minus 6 will give us minus 26. Minus 15i plus 8i will actually give us um, minus 7i, like so. And therefore, if we are supposed to find uh, the real part, uh, so the real part uh, is actually minus 20, minus 26. Okay, that is the real part. And the real part is the part without without the i. Okay, so in other words, uh, we can conclude and say, for example, hence uh, the real part of Z W is minus twenty six, and this is the result. Right, this is uh, the result. Okay, but um, uh, we could... yes, please. Uh, can you explain this symbol? This symbol, okay, this symbol means the real part. So in other words, um, this symbol, um, as it is written here, let's speak about the real part a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to get back to the presentation. All right, there's something called the real part. Right, so you obviously the real part of a complex number. That's what we're talking about. We speak about complex numbers. So the real part of a complex number. So in other words, uh, the real part of a complex number Z, for example, will be the real part of uh, the complex number Z of the form X plus IY and the real part is X. All right, so now um, we have just uh, extracted the real part there. Okay, and so um, at this point, uh, we have uh, extracted from the complex number we got the real part and the real part is uh, minus 26 and that is what we have written down. Right, so we continue to look at more um, properties of complex numbers. We're interested in, in finding the um, imaginary part as well, because given a complex number, we can be able to find the imaginary part. At this point, where we are asked to find the imaginary part of the multiplicative inverse of the complex numbers that which is 5 minus 2i. Let's look at that one. Right, so that is uh, 
Number two, we are asked to find the imaginary part of the multiplicative inverse of z. In other words, the imaginary part of one over z, and therefore it is the imaginary part of one over, and this is five minus two i. Okay, that's what we wrote here. That's what we wrote here, it's five minus two i. All right, let us find the imaginary part of this. So the imaginary part of this is uh, the imaginary part, which is one divided by five minus twice i. We multiply by five plus twice i. We divide by five plus twice i. And this uh, multiplication is multiplication by what you call the complex conjugate. So this entity here is called the complex. Complex conjugate, so we discuss uh, complex conjugation. Now, if this is the complex conjugate of, uh, in other words, the complex conjugate of a complex number is uh, that complex number um, whose uh, um, imaginary part has the opposite, opposite sign. Uh, if it is it is a minus, then you actually put a plus, and if it is a, a plus there, you put a minus. So that constitutes what you call the complex conjugate of a complex number. Just to mention, uh, the idea of a complex conjugate is 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 a very very well understood concept. Z equals x plus i y is a complex number. This means that we can find the complex conjugate shown by um, z conjugate or z bar, which is x minus i y, like this. Okay, so this is complex conjugation. Now, with that mentioned, then we're able to compute here and find the the major part of this. So one by the numerator is five plus two i. Right, the denominator is clearly a product of these with that. This product here is like what you call the difference of two squares. So five by five gives us 25. Then we just multiply the major is the major parts, minus two i times uh, plus two i would give us plus four. And therefore, this means uh, we have the major part of five plus two i, and we divide these by 29, which is 25 by plus four. Okay, let's do this one. I'm sorry. In other words, now, if we have in the major part of this number, major part of this number, number two, the major part of the, uh, the one of a z. Okay, let's just start there to be more systematic. So we have the major part of uh, what we just got here, which is five plus two i over twenty nine. Five plus two i all over twenty nine, and this is the the major part of five out of twenty nine plus two i over twenty nine. Right, and therefore now we're interested in just finding the major part of this number, and what is the major part of this number? The major part of the number is uh, is two out of twenty nine. And obviously, we're able to therefore say thus uh, the major part of one over z is two out of twenty nine, and this is the result. Okay, so we have found here the major part of this complex number. So yeah, take a particular note of this, and this is extremely, extremely important for us. And we shall obviously discuss it a little bit more uh, examples. Hello? Yes, please. Uh, what happened here? Okay, what happened, that's a good question. What happened was that uh, we extracted the imaginary part because uh, uh, by definition, uh, okay, if, if Z, is x plus i y, then the marginal part of z is just y. So the marginal part, we just take the, the coefficient of i. So here, the coefficient of i is 2 over 29. So the marginal part of this will therefore become 2 out of 29. Now, the certain things that remain extremely important for us, as we discuss complex conjugation, Right, so in other words, we take just a couple of notes. Right, note, if z is x plus i, y, and we agree that 
Uh, this is the case where Z is a complex number, but X and Y are real numbers, like this. Okay, then if this is the case, then we make the following notes. Then the real part, okay, let me just write it in words. Um, right, so then the real part of Z, right, is denoted as what? It's denoted as uh, the real part of Z, which becomes the real part of X plus IY, and this real part is X. There's something we call the imaginary part. The imaginary part of Z. The marginal part of that is uh, the marginal part of x plus i y, which is the marginal part is just the coefficient of uh, of of i. And then there's something we call the complex complex conjugate of z. Right. So the complex conjugate of z. Is Z is X plus I Y, and therefore its complex conjugate is X minus I Y. Okay, so the, these are some of the uh, uh, properties that we shall um, learn very much. And but there's something also we call the modulus of Z, the complex modulus of Z. So what we call the modulus of Z. Just call it the modulus of Z. Right. So modulus of z right z is x plus i y implies that the modulus of z is uh, the square root of x squared plus y squared this entity is called the modulus of z or well i mean we we study or what you call the the absolute value of z but yeah we call it the modulus of z um well, the absolute value is normally for real, real, um, real numbers. Okay, so we take note of this, and this is uh, the actual distance. The actual distance of uh, of the complex number from the origin. A, co a complex number that that sits in the first quadrant of the of this. This is called the argand. It's called the argand diagram. What is the Argand diagram? Well, the Argand diagram is a uh, is the complex plane, right? Argand diagram represents what we call the complex complex plane, uh, and it's very important we note this. Now, the complex plane has is drawn in a, in many ways. For example, um, now this one is the, the real part of that. Okay, which is normally called the x-axis, and this one is called the y-axis. So, um, obviously, then we are able to plot the complex number like this. A, a complex number that sits in the first quadrant, for example, will therefore be um, of interest to us. Yeah, but it doesn't matter where the complex number sits. So, whether the complex number sits in the first or it sits, sits in any part, like any number, like any point. You can plot because this complex number is like a point. But this complex number, these complex numbers themselves can be viewed as vectors, and therefore we are able to we're able to find uh, the the distance from the origin, from the origin to the complex number, which is this one. So in other words, um, we are able to. So this is uh, a result that we learned in, in school, uh, a result after Pythagoras. So yeah, we take note of this. So this one is going to be y, and this is going to be x. For example, this is going to be right angle and the length of this here is the length of the hypotenuse is this entity here okay now there are a couple of things that uh, remain very very important to us that we need to take note of and i want us to pay particular attention to these and so now for example you we are expected to have knowledge for our assessment of the following things right uh, here is one, evaluate. Right, so evaluate, for example, one minus i to the fourth power. Right, we need to be able to evaluate one minus i to the fourth power. 
And how do we do one minus i to the fourth power? Okay, so this one we use what we call Pascal's triangle. Right, so to do the solution for this, something we call Pascal's triangle. Okay, um, right. Pascal's triangle. What will Pascal's triangle tell us? It tells us that a triangle can be formed like this. If you add one, two, uh, you get three. Two and one, you add, you get three. You add the uh, one and three, you get four. Three, three, you add them, you get six. Three and one, you get four. You have, have one, one. Okay, because this one is to the fourth power, so this one will be associated, for instance, with with uh, the expansion x plus um, y i to the first power, and uh, this will be sort of the coefficients. And this one is going to be the 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 square. This is going to be the cube, and this is going to be the fourth power. Right, so x plus y i to the fourth power. Okay, let's just evaluate this one. Where the coefficients, therefore the binomial coefficients will be one, four, six, four, one, just an example. So, but you can do cubes and squares and higher powers. So let's just uh, do this one. For example, the y minus i to the fourth power. By the binomial theorem, we start by the coefficients first, and you can see the coefficient is one. So we're gonna put one. Times, uh, we raise this one to the fourth power. Then the next thing is we put a four plus four, then we cube um the one and the, the minus i now will have power one. Right. And then there's six because it's 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 one four six four one, then there's six. The six we square the minus i now will increase in power because it was power zero here, power one here, power two, and then now there's four, which is gonna be one to the power one minus i to the third power. There is coefficient one, according to the Pascal's triangle. Then we come here, the one is gonna be to the power zero and the minus i is gonna be to the fourth power. And this means if you have this one here, we have the following, right? So when you come to this now, this is one is one. And then here is minus one minus i. You raise the power one, but this is four there. And this is gonna be minus four i like this and this one you square if you square minus the negative is going to be a plus but you square i you get a minus one times six which is going to be minus six and now this one here you cube it if you cube i um alone it becomes minus i right so if you cube um the minus i so you're going to be getting just i, right? So which is going to be uh, plus four i. And then now you raise this one. So this one now you raise minus to the fourth power. Negative raised to the fourth power is what? It's just a one and you raise um, i to the fourth power. It's like i times i times i times i four times. But i squared is minus one. So there are two i squareds here giving us a minus one times minus one, which gives us a one. Okay, so in other words, we have one minus i to the fourth power. So yeah, okay, now clearly here you have these two guys and the one and one gives us two and two minus six gives us minus, minus four. And this is the answer. Okay, just uh, uh, some um, complex operations that we must be able to perform. Okay, here's another example. Right, so if z, if z is five plus two i and uh, w, right, and w is equal to what? What are you? Yeah, can just take the same thing here. Right, w is equal to yeah. Okay, five minus two i minus four minus three i. Okay. 5 minus 2i minus 4 minus 3i. Right, like so. And then now, okay, if this is the case, find, find the modulus of z 
the modulus of W and the modulus of ZW, for example. Okay, very easy stuff. Um, just practicing here. So obviously, I'm sure that this will be pretty straightforward. Let us find the length or the modulus of Z. Okay, so Z is this one. So its modulus is uh, 5 minus 2i. You find the modulus and you find the square root of 5 squared plus minus 2 squared like this. So by definition, you square the real part, you square the major part. And the uh, 5 squared is what? Is 25. And minus 2 squared is 4. And this is the square root of 29, like this. OK, now we can do the same for the other one. OK, let's just uh, w, for example, will be minus 4 minus 3i. Minus 4 minus 3i. And then you have the square root of minus 4. You square this and minus three, you square this. And therefore, if you square minus four, you have a 16 with a nine. And therefore, this is a 25. And therefore, uh, the square root of 25 is five. So that the length of the modulus of this, which is the length of the vector, okay? Complex numbers are vectors. So yeah, we can always uh, discuss that because every complex number can be perceived as a vector, okay? With this mentioned, then we're able to stay to some of the properties that are very important um, that we need to that we need to uh, know. For example, okay, for purposes of study, I want us to also make mention of uh, the abbreviations of this. Okay, let us find uh, this one for example. If uh, W is uh, three minus I, find uh, the imaginal part of one over w. Right, so we need to expect these kinds of things. So let's quickly look at the solution to that and practice, and then we shall move on to domains and, and other things. Okay, now let us uh, look at this. So to find the imaginal part of one over w, we're gonna say the imaginal part of one over w is the imaginal part of one over W is three minus I, like this. Okay, and therefore, what is this? It is the marginal part of one over. So this is three minus I. We multiply, we perform complex conjugation on the on the three minus I, getting three plus I. We divide by the same thing. So this is multiplying by the conjugate in that manner. Okay, getting now the marginal part of the numerator will be one times this which is three plus i, and then we divide three by three, it's nine. Okay, this is like a difference of two squares. Multiply three and three, the minus i and the plus i, so they give us together the, the one, so that the marginal part is uh, three plus i divided by 10. Okay, so for example, now if you have a marginal part of one over w, so it is exactly th the marginal part of three plus i out of 10, which is the marginal part of three out of 10, i out of 10, right? And the marginal part of this complex number is one over 10, right? So, and uh, we are done with that particular kind of a problem here, right? And I want us to find the following, and, and this is very important. If, for example, if Z is one plus four I, find uh, the length of the complex conjugate of Z. Right, so now, how do we do this? First and foremost, we need to realize that we need to find uh, the length of the complex conjugate, which is uh, the length of one plus four I, like this. And therefore, if you find uh, the complex conjugate is one minus four i, the length, the modulus is one squared minus four squared. And therefore, this here is uh, exactly one plus 16, and this is the square root of 17. Okay, you need to check these um, yourself because, it, well, you need to check the, fact that the, the instructions for the assessment because, um, yeah, it's very important that 
because normally the you need to type in the answers. So when you type in the answers, now some of these are decimals, like this one is going to be, I gave it on papers, it's going to be the square root of 17. So the question then obviously at this point becomes, how does the system take the answers and what answers does it attack because it was rejecting answers at some point. So 4.12310 is the square root of 17. But now the question is, how can that system take the responses? Because there are many ways in which one can type in this answer um, on, on a computer um, assessment, computerized assessment. So you can do SQRT 17. Okay, SQRT 17 is uh, obviously is, is, is irrational, but you'd have that it is approximately this. But now the question is, what do you type? Do you type SQRT 17? You need to check the instructions. That's my point. The instructions before the, 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 the assessment is started. So that you can, because you can get the right answer. And now the, the if you type SQRT 17, because you need to type in the answer and, and, and that's, Assessment does not have characters, does not have these symbols where you can just, uh, you know, punch the square root and it appears there. Okay, so it's something that uh, you need to take note of. I want us to discuss uh, certain things that are called domains and ranges. Right, so as part of what you need to know, you need to know what a domain is, but also you need to know what ranges are. And uh, let us uh, discuss uh, these uh, very, very important things. Now, what is a domain and what is a range? So you might be able to perform certain sketches. Right, sketch. Sketch the following. Sketch the following sets. And determine. Right, and determine. Um, which are domains and determine which are domains. Now, let us look at this one. Z minus two plus I is less than or equal to one. Two, uh, B the modulus of 2z plus 3 is strictly greater than 4. Um, C, you have the marginal part of z is strictly bigger than 1. D, you have the marginal part of z is equal to 1. E, okay, there's something we call Okay, no. Right, there's something called the argument. Right, so we have the argument of Z, which is less than or equal to pi over 4, where Z is not 0. And then you have F. Yeah, I've, I've split the meeting into, into a couple of parts, into three parts. Okay, so we shall have that. So now let us first look at some of this. Let's look at the first one. Uh, now we need to sketch these particular uh, sets. Let's sketch part A. And then obviously our time is going to elapse. I'm watching the time there. We still have more time. But now when the time elapses, then I'm going to start the next session uh, the immediately in like 15 minutes. Um, there. Okay. And that's how I plan to do today's discussion. Of, you know, but it's going to be in the end, two hours or after all, 40 minutes each. Right, Z minus 2I plus, no, minus 2 plus I. Right, so it's minus 2 plus I modulus, which is less or equal to 1. Okay, so we have this here, and to, to sketch this, it's easier to note that Z is a complex number, so we let, we let Z to be X plus I, Y, so it has also a real part X and an imaginary part Y, imaginary part Y, so you have minus two plus I, and you have less or equal to one, 
Okay, within the modular sign, and you can group the real parts, which are x and minus two. And then now you just pull out i here and you have the, the imaginary parts that are like two of these, two imaginary parts, we factor out the i. And then now we can take the, okay, what is the modulus? The modulus means the square root of the square of the real part and uh, the square of the major part, and the result is less or equal to one, okay? So at this point, if you have uh, for part A, the square root of, for example, x minus two, you square this, and then y plus one, you square this, okay? And then now we have less or equal to one. Okay, you square both left and right. You square both sides of this. If you square both sides, you have x minus two. You square that, you have y plus one. You square that is less or equal to one. Okay, so these kind of geometry, a geometrical representation, um, it has the, uh, so the, the extreme, Okay, so this is a set, or is this is the set of points, of points inside and on the circle. on the circle centered centered at the point at the point right sorry it's centered at the point two minus i okay this this is positive two and this becomes like a minus one two minus i so yeah or we can we can take it from here. And at this point, we can write this as z minus, and then you put two minus i, you factor out, you factor out the negative here. And so obviously this becomes z minus a less or equal to one, where this is a complex number. So this becomes in general, the center associated with this circle. And this is some radius. We are, but yeah, once again, this is not a circle, it's a it's a region. Um, and obviously, even the way this is described, this this is the set of all points inside and on the circle centered at the point uh, two minus i, okay, with radius one. Right, so with radius with radius one. Okay. Okay, but now very important. So we're describing the kind of set. Describe the set. This is a set of points inside and on the circle centered at the point t minus i with radius one. Okay, it is not. It is. Um. It is. Uh, okay. Let's first describe what it is. It is uh, closed. Okay, because if you sketch this, it's going to be like this. The circle is like this, and it has the center there. But now you are, it's equal to one. So the boundary is included, but it's less. So you also shade the interior. In other words, it is closed and bounded. Right, it is closed and bounded. It is a, it is the set of points inside and on the circle centered at the point two um, minus i with the radius one. It is closed and bounded. Okay, it is closed. Why is it closed? Well, a set is closed if its complement is open. Okay, that is three. This module is connected to three seven. Is real analysis uh, three seven one one. Okay, so that is where you get the definitions on real uh, real sets and so on. Okay, now, so but is it a domain? These. Is it a domain because it is closed? So, okay, we're gonna discuss, so I'm gonna give a formal definition of a domain, but we're gonna say it is not. 
it is not a domain. It is not a domain as it is not open. Domains, domains in mathematics are open. So it is not a domain, okay? So why is it not a domain? Uh, as it is not open. How is it not open? Okay, because it contains a boundary and also the interior. It contains the boundary and also the interior. So this one here is closed, but also it is bounded. And, and hence it is not, it is not a domain. All right, I think that this is very much enough. We discussed uh, a little bit, but are we gonna return again in 15 minutes? Okay, so I'm watching the time now. Okay, we could take a short break. So we're gonna return again at four. You forgive me because I'm gonna split the meeting into three today. But we're gonna, we shall return again at four. I'm gonna send another link closer to the time because sometimes it's, you see it said the link was invalid because I sent it a little bit earlier. I think that the might be expiration, the time and, and all that. So yeah, I mean like five minutes, five minutes before I'm gonna send the link. And then now we're gonna continue at four, 4 p.m. And we're gonna look at more things, um, a continuation of this. Okay, but yeah, I'm gonna make this video available for you to just pass through and check uh, the discussion. But I'm gonna bring new stuff uh, there that you need to know for the assessment. Okay, yeah, bye for now and thanks a lot then. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye. Uh, should I leave? Yes, please. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay for now until four. Until four. Shall meet again at four.